Do, 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 do. Canadair FSI handlebars with 77 centimeters, and Canadair Killer V will have 74. That's quite a difference. 26er, 29er. The question is, should I cut my handlebar or not? Let's talk about it. Dear viewers, welcome to Shyback Studio. I'm happy to announce I'm just taking the FSI for the field test. Uh, I have four different tracks prepared from five minutes up to 80 minutes long. The same exact tracks I was doing on the killer, the old school one this season. We'll see what the difference will be. Now, what do you reckon? Uh, we'll see about that. But so far, I need to make decision about my handlebar width. And you are asking quite many questions about it on different bicycle forums. The simplest answer is think for yourself, because if you wouldn't, you would be riding narrow bar with the bar ends 15 years ago, and now you'd be riding no bar ends and super wide bars. Think for yourself. And here, here's what my opinion about it. I'm gonna share with you two main myths about wide bars for cross country and marathon. I'm not talking enduro and downhill, cross country and marathon. And then two main disadvantages of having two wide bars. My goal is, shy bike, is to talk simple and short. Please give me your feed feedback or whether I'm improving or not, all right? So two main myths about wide bars for 29er in cross country. Number one is, we have this huge bike now comparing to the 26er and we have huge wheels so we have much higher uh, rotational inertia which is true so that we need much more leverage in order to turn these wheels and that's a huge myth huge mistake uh, in my opinion at least why is it so that's true we have higher iner inertia the bike is just larger and it's not as nimble as 26er, but we never, we, we never turn the wheel like that. This is not a car. So we don't need to force the front wheel to turn. Actually forcing it to turn will also make uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, back end to do crazy stuff. So we are not doing it. We, tur we are turning the bike by simply shifting the weight. Of course, we have the handlebars and we need to turn the wheel as well, but it's not happening with a lot of power, with a lot of force. The thing is, the slower we ride, the more we use handlebar in order to turn, but then the inertia is also way, wedge, uh, way, way um, lower. So there's not so much difference between 29er and 26, 26er on single track, doing them slowly. So wider bars will not help a lot. Second myth is not maybe that common, but I've heard it from, from, from some riders and it is having wider bars allows you to breathe better because your torso is more open and you can breathe better. And that's myth number two. Uh, and it, it will actually be connected to the second disadvantage of having wider bar because it can be the opposite. Okay, was it short and simple? Let's go to the two main disadvantages of having two wide bars on the 29er on any bike. The first one means less space on the racing track for us. And you know that we need space in order to overtake other guys and also maneuver between those trees or coming into some really tight corner just around some obstacle of the tree. Having super wide handlebar doesn't help a lot. And you know how crucial it is in cross country, for example, to overtake as many as you can at the beginning of the race before we hit to that single track section. And marathons, MTB marathons, they can be just packed with people, really crowded. Having just a little bit narrower handlebar can really help and save you some time. So think about that. This advantage number two is actually breathing and uphills. Let's talk about breathing. Some people say that uh, when I'm having, you know, these handlebars wide, my torso is fully open and so I can breathe. <sighs> okay, just look at some pro riders on the uphills, what they do. You will see their belly working as hell and here almost nothing happens. So the belly, 
the diaphragm should be working up and down, up and down pumping the, this air and it looks like this not like this so actually if we have really like much wider bars for example 540 770 that means that we lean more to the front and we have less space for our diaphragm to to work really efficiently it doesn't maybe kill our um, breathing but if you are racing we're talking cross-country marathon racing it can have impact on how fast you actually are so just think about what the handlebar width is doing with your position because also the shape of the bar I will sometime uh, change it if the bar is like super straight the wider bar the more you are uh, uh, leaning to the front if it's uh, just uh, bending then it cannot uh, have a such such a huge uh, effect on your breathing but just have that in mind also when we are riding up the hills we need to stabilize uh, our pelvis and in order to help our pelvis to be stabilized we want to stabilize uh, our arms when i look at the cross country uh, you know riders going up the hills you can see that this is not the most efficient move not the most efficient way having so wide uh, palms uh, positioned and doing this move in my opinion really narrow bar with the handlebars which also rotates your arms uh, makes this move much more natural so that i can push with my leg and pull with my arm and it feels so much better so I don't know how much I will cut my handlebar just yet. Probably I will do it at least twice. So I'll go down to just below 70 centimeters and then we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes on the tracks. So remember, having more leverage for the wheel to turn is a huge myth. So that's, that's not, uh, not that uh, important. And also better breathing. Actually, the more upright position, the better breathing. If you look at Tour de France, for example, all those riders on the huge, um, huge steep climbs, those would even keep their hands really close to the stem, having more upright position and working smoothly with their diaphragm. Okay, guys, did I improve my talking? Was it simple and quite short? Uh, I hope it was. I will definitely uh, let you know how much uh, I have uh, cut off my handlebar and how it goes with my uh, field test. Share your opinion about different handlebars. How do you feel on it? If you are cross country, also maybe if you are enduro, then you can tell us more about having some leverage really in order to have better traction, but that's also other topic. Thanks for watching. See you next time.